Hi, today I'm going to talk about safety and uh, the jam chuck and, and how that works and how to, how to get it uh, all set up. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that and we'll talk about uh, just basic uh, safety in the shop. All right, first of all, uh, uh, talk about safety. Um, the lathe is a little different than most of the tools in your shop. It, uh, it can suck you into it, suck you know tools into it when when you're turning or it can throw stuff at you um i've been pretty lucky i've had you know quite a few things come off the lathe but i've only had one of them one of them hit me it was a bowl had a small crack in it and a, a chunk flew off and i was trying to get out of the way and it, it caught me just uh scraped the side of my cheek that's the only thing i've really had uh had hit me on the lathe but keep your tool rest up up right up against your work so it's not not pulling your tools down um, trying to pull it out of your hand that helps a lot to get, keep it supported all the way up uh, as far as you can um, if you're turning something something big you know turn your lathe up till it just starts to vibrate and then back it off it um, you you want to get it get it true before you start to turn it off or turn it up if uh, it has a, any sort of defects in it you want to uh, be careful and keep that lathe speed down don't don't turn it up too much um, and the speed de depends on the size of it, so it's not just a general. You can run it at 1,500 RPM or you know whatever. You need to need to uh, decide on the piece of wood. You need to know if it, if it's a large large piece with a defect, you need to back it off. Or if, if you're turning pins, you can you can turn the speed up. But even even that, it's um, some something can happen. You know, it can pop out of out of something, but you can turn the lathe speed up a little bit more. Um, just in general, just need to respect the tools. They're, they don't care what they're cutting. I mean, they, they don't. So it's just, uh, James sent me an email, um, and that's, that's why I'm doing the video. He wanted me to talk about it a little bit. He, uh, cut his finger on the table saw the other day and actually had to have it amputated to the, the first knuckle. Um, I'll tell, tell you a little story about, um, uh, table saw. I was working on a few years ago, fired it up. Pull my piece of wood up there, slid up against the fence, and started to push it in. As soon as it hit the the wood, the blade hit the wood. All of a sudden, I'm just just I get a hot flash. Blood starts dripping out of my face onto the table saw. I get the saw shut off, get in the bathroom, and there's something in my in my nose, right in the tip of my nose. I uh, think I think it's just a piece of wood, a splinter or something flew off. I get the tweezers out, dig it out, and it was a car. It was a tooth, a carbide tooth off the blade. It actually popped off the blade and embedded itself in my nose. Um, an inch and a half either way, and I would have lost an eye. Um, I never turn that table saw on without safety glasses, and even then, every time I fire it up, I I remember that. So you just just need to respect the to uh, tools. You need to work as safe safely as you can so when you're working on the lathe uh face shield safety glasses it's it's just you just never know what's going to happen and a lot of times you can't even see a defect in the wood uh, until you start turning it and so you don't you just don't know so um just be as safe as possible and try and minimize the risk so all right let's go ahead and talk about uh jam chuck all right. So when you're doing a jam chuck, you want want this to be parallel with with this, so it has as much uh, wood contact as possible, and you want to leave a little bit of a collar on it, so it has something to butt up against, so that it, it will true up, and you want it to seat all the way down, and you want it to be fairly tight, so it'll run run true. If you still had the tenon on here, you bring the tail stock up to the tenon and you can turn the majority of the tenon off um, even if you're doing doing a bowl or something like that you can turn the majority of the tenon off before you have to pull the tail stock off away just to get that last little nub but make sure that it's that they're parallel all the way down and the same thing with with all right uh, same principle uh, when you're you're making the a lid for a box. You want that um, tenon on the lid and the box to be parallel, so that when you put them on, there's there's contact all the way down and it won't come off. If you undercut this a little bit, it'll be tight when you first put it on, and then just loosen up and, and flop around. And the same with this. You want them to be be parallel, so it's a nice tight fit, and you get that little pop on it. So. 
on the jam chuck um, they come in handy on a lot of stuff, especially little boxes. I use them on on almost all the boxes I make. They're they're just invaluable, I think. All right, I hope that cleared it up. I uh, just try and keep them parallel and put a little collar on there so it has something to seat up against. Um, I like uh, I was doing or the baby rattle, um, something like this. I use jam chuck on a tube, but basically just to sand it. So there's very little contact on the wood too. But it's just put a uh, uh, something for it to seat on here and uh, turn it down and then I just just slide them on there and just sand up the very top of it when I'm doing something like that. All right I hope that helped uh, cleared up the question about the tenon um, and just don't forget uh, try and work as safe as possible it's um, it's there's always going to be a risk but you can uh, minimize a lot of them with uh, just some basic basic things but uh, next week I'm going to do a sharpening video. But thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.